This will be a quick introduction to Blackboard Collaborate. At WSU, we use a collection of different lecture capture and delivery tools for online instruction. Collaborate is the one tool in our kit that allows for synchronous interaction with students, and the students can interact with us through those tools. Panopto and BrainChart capture lectures for later viewing, and each of them has its own strong points. Collaborate is actually available to us in two related tools. The primary tool is the Blackboard Collaborate tool that is available in the Tools menu of any course or, or organization in Blackboard. It requires a launcher, which can create some usability challenges the first time students try it out, but it has some key advantages over the in Instant Messenger or IM version. It can allow guests and sessions can be recorded. The Blackboard Instant Messenger or IM tool which is available by downloading a separate tool and setting up a separate account that is tied to your WSU account, creates a walled garden, a space where only students and staff can interact, and you're connected with everyone in one of your classes or orgs. Collaborate allows us to interact synchronously with students, which means we can use it for one-on-one -on -one or small group video conferencing, webinar-style lectures, and organized group work. One of the things I like to point out at this point is that we recommend that instructors limit the amount of synchronous interaction they require in their classes to the bare minimum. That will vary depending upon your subject matter and instructional needs, but one of the key advantages of online classes to students is the scheduling flexibility. And when we force them to attend lectures synchronously, we eliminate one of those key advantages. Collaborate has some limited gradebook integration, so you can award points to students who attend if that's part of your grading scheme. Like any technology tool, the best way to get started is to spend some time trying it out. We recommend having several practice sessions with colleagues to test out the tools before you try to use it for classroom instruction. Again, lecture delivery and collaborate is possible, but it may not be the best tool for the job depending upon your requirements. We recommend asynchronous lecture capture whenever possible. Another key idea for any sort of online lecture presentation is that you need to pay a great deal more attention to your visuals. In a face-to-face -face lecture, the vast majority of the attention is on the speaker, and the slides can be minimal. But for most online delivery, the visuals must carry a lot of weight. Interaction should also be much more deliberate. We recommend planning for some of, sort of interaction or response requested from the audience every three to five minutes, and it's best to actually create a slide in your presentation to anchor that interaction. Collaborate's real strength comes when we take on more collaborative activities. Group work, conferencing, and office hours allow students to meet with you or each other much as they might face to face. One key component of online instruction is the challenge of having grade discussions with your students. It's actually a FERPA violation to discuss grades via email, so our recommendation for handling students who want to talk about a grade is to schedule a Collaborate session with the student. Student group work is a great use of Collaborate. A larger session can be broken into groups, or you may even want to consider some other possible uses. In the case of our online Spanish classes, we are trying to accommodate the need for student conversation practice with each other. For that class, we created a scheduled Collaborate session that was two weeks long. Students could arrange times to meet their conversation partner for their five-minute conversation in the room, have their conversation, and leave. The instructor could come through after the fact and review the recorded sessions to ensure the students were doing the work and be able to provide feedback. The Blackboard Instant Messenger client is a simple chat tool that has Collaborate's tools built into it. A simple text chat can be turned into a video and audio chat, and a screen sharing session can be started as well. There's an office hours feature which makes it very effective and usable, and the rest of the tools very, work very much like the other Collaborate tools. As we close out this introduction and begin to look at the tools themselves, here are a few tips. First, you'll want to plan the moments at which you're going to check in with your audience, ideally every three to five minutes. Ask them a question of some sort or give them some opportunity to interact so that they're not just sitting back and passively viewing the content. If you're going to ask questions, make sure you build them into your slide deck as questions so that you don't forget. And finally, for URLs that you'll wind up using often, it can save a lot of time and effort to create a short URL for your office hours collaborate session. From here, we'll share a handful of screencasts that demonstrate the collaborate functionality. 
So let's start off by showing you how to get into a Blackboard Collaborate session and how to access the tools. I'm going to start by going into one of my classes. And I'm going to go to the Tools menu. And here we'll see Blackboard Collaborate. Now one thing you might like to do if you're going to use Blackboard Collaborate a lot in your class would be to go ahead and add a tool link to it. So I can go to tool link here and select Blackboard Collaborate, the scheduling manager, which is the same thing, and I'll just name it Blackboard Collaborate. And make it available to users. That's all you have to do to do that. So then it shows up here and I can move it up into a prominent position in my menu. But, and that would just take me right to this exact same page. So, um, when you're in your class and you're on, on the Blackboard Collaborate page, we'll see uh, probably three options like this. Um, the first one, the first of these rooms, is a room dedicated to the specific class. Um, and there's the big join button. Um, I can invite guests to it, I could add a link to it, I can edit it, and we'll talk about the, the options there in a second. The second uh, window here, the second room, is my office hours room, and I've renamed it that. Um, we can edit that. Let me show you what the edit looks like. I could change it. Uh, I decided to call that my office hours. That helps me keep it straight. The, the big idea here is that this particular collaborate room will be the same in all of the classes and organizations that I'm in. So a student who finds it in this class, my science fiction class, will find me there. Um, if it's a scheduled time, I've said I was going to have my office hours and I'd be available. Um, somebody who's in another class I'm teaching or an org that I'm in uh, that has access to this would, uh, if they join the room, they'll also find me there. So everybody would be able to find me in that. That is the same actual room that shows up in across all of those orgs. So this one is specific to just this class. If I was going to do a lecture, I would want to use this one. If I'm doing office hours and I'm going to be available to multiple classes or multiple organizations, I'd want to use this one. And then here we have the schedule a session option, and this would allow us to schedule something that will happen in the future. That's especially useful for things like webinars that you want to promote to other people. Uh, if you want to create something scheduled ahead of time and set some specific parameters for it, that sort of thing. Uh, let's go in to edit the room on this first one on my class and take a look at the options. Uh, again, I can control the name of the room. Right now it's defaulting to the name of the class and room and I'll go ahead and leave that alone. There are three menu options here, teleconference room abilities and roles and access. The teleconference option is pretty straightforward. Do I want to use the built-in teleconference, use something third party, which we don't have, and or not use the teleconference at all? Um, by default, we want to use the built-in. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like in a minute. But um, students will be using their computers, uh, microphones, and, and speakers to listen and understand what's going on. Um, they will have the option if they need it to be able to dial into a phone number um, if they're having problems with the audio. So that's the teleconference options. The room attributes gets into a little bit more uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, so let's just talk through some of these options. The recording mode is manual, automatic, or disabled. If it's manual, every time you start up the session, it's going to ask you whether you want to record it or not. Um, if you set it to automatic, it will automatically record, and if you set it to disabled, it won't. So usually, by default, we leave that to manual and let us make the choice at the time. The maximum simultaneous talkers and cameras is all the, the it's defaults to six, which is the absolute maximum. It's not really much reason to change it beyond that. You can't set it higher, so that's about it. Um, you've got some other options here that we don't necessarily go into, go into a lot of detail on. Viewing private messages would give you access to everybody's messages uh, if they're sending private messages to each other in it. Um, giving everybody all permissions would uh, give people full permissions access to the session resources, uh, not just the presenters. Um, you don't necessarily want to do that. Um, raising hands on entry is fun. Um, you'll see when we do the demo of the actual Collaborate session that 
there's a noise and a, a, a thing that indicates uh, somebody raising their hand. And this would automatically do that for somebody if they enter the room uh, late or something like that. Uh, and that was a fun way to embarrass them for coming to class late and that sort of thing. Um, so we'd usually leave that off, but you may, if you start having problems with students coming late, have them do that. This would allow you to send a link from within the, the session to somebody who isn't there. Maybe you're inviting a guest who you've decided to add, or maybe a student isn't there and doesn't have the link. So usually leave that on unless you're keeping it private, say for a student uh, grade conference or something like that. You might want to leave that off. Allowing guests, again, it's defaults to on, but we might in some cases want to set that to off so that we keep people from wandering in who don't belong there. Um, hiding names and recordings we might want to do if we were doing a recording and planning to use it later uh, in other classes and that sort of thing, but in most cases we'll li leave that on the default. And then the preloading content, this allows us to upload a PowerPoint that we will use in the presentation ahead of time. Um, we can do it once we're there as well, so most people don't pay a lot of attention to that and don't really do much with it. So in most cases, most of these defaults are exactly what you need. And then the last thing here is the roles and access. Um, if I select all users join as moderators, then everybody will have the ability to turn on their microphone and speaker, or the microphone and camera. Everyone will be able to draw on the whiteboard. Everyone will be able to upload content. Uh, so that's something you might want to use for uh, meetings rather than class sessions or webinars uh, where you're actually going to be working collaboratively with somebody. Um, and if you wanted to restrict access to this, you might, you'll give you the option to add specific participants who are the only people allowed in there. Otherwise, you can set up preload people who will be moderators. And that's that. So the, uh, that's one of this room. The office hours room looks much the same. The schedule a session adds a few options. So I have those options here, just like the other one the roles and access, but we have these two others. We have a session type, which lets us select course or shared. Shared would be the equivalent of your office hours. It would be something that people in multiple classes would be able to access. In most cases, if you're scheduling it, it's probably for a specific course. Um, so again, the default's probably all right there. And then there's the grade center integration, which adds an, a grade column to the grade book and students would get points awarded for actually attending. And then the last stuff you'll have here is to set a start time and an end time. So uh, do we want it to repeat? And if we said yes, it would give us tools for figuring out on what pattern it's going to repeat. And then this last option here is how early do we want people to be able to get in? And this will also impact you, how early you're able to get in. So I often give myself a little extra time to get in. Um, you can use that time to make sure everything's working. You can use that time to uh, upload content if you haven't preloaded it. So often that's useful, but uh, that 15 minutes is uh, the default there. And once I've created this, I can hit save. And now that I've scheduled it, that session shows up here. Now because I took the defaults on the, the session, it's actually going for a time that's in the very near future, so it's available here. If I had scheduled this out earlier, so let me edit the session and move it out a day. I'll set the end time also so it doesn't get confused. And we'll set this now so that this is a meeting that would happen tomorrow. You'll see that that available icon is gone. So no one can get into this until 15 minutes before 2 o'clock tomorrow. So that's how that works. And then if we had recorded sessions, they would be on this tab here, and they would just be available. Um, it may take a little while for recordings to be processed on the Collaborate servers before they're available, so they won't be ready immediately. So if you're going to offer a link to students to say, hey, check out this recording of the lecture if you missed it, uh, you will want to make sure that it's had time to process and it is available before you offer that to them. So at any rate, once we're ready to actually jump into a room, I'm going to go ahead and click jump room or join room here. We come to this screen. There's the guest URL. Um, there's the join room. One thing to pay attention to is this link here. 
Um, now on my computer it's offering me the join room rather than the download collaborate launcher because it has already identified that I have that 